All right, good evening. This is uh, our Beginners Academy uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, we like to uh, have programs for new and returning hams and hams in general. And tonight, Bob Albers, uh, Alpha Bravo for Oscar Bravo, uh, a Panama City Amateur Radio Club members volunteered to give a talk on uh, grid tracker. So we're really looking forward to it and we'll turn it over to Bob. All right. Thank you. Do you guys see my screen okay? Yep. 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 All righty. So uh, nothing fancy here. Uh, most everyone is familiar with WSJTX. And uh, Grid Tracker is a nice addition to it. And uh, hopefully, I'll demonstrate some of the features tonight. I'm going to cover uh, the setup and usage for FT8. Uh, it does work with other digital modes. And uh, Grid Tracker also works with JTDX if you like using JTDX. I've got uh, really not a big formal agenda. We're going to talk about the setup and some options and recommendations that I have for WSJTX setup. Some of the shortcomings that uh, Grid Tracker can help with and uh, you know how do we make it work with Grid Tracker. It's really pretty darn simple. Uh, the setup of Grid Tracker, the number, number of different options and uh, how to use all the tools that they uh, provide. I'm still learning features of Grid Tracker after using it for, I don't know, three quarters of a year. I've been using, I've been on the air for about a year with FTA, and then about nine months ago, I got hooked on uh, Grid Tracker, and it's uh, it's awesome. So I'll sh hope to show that to you. Um, and then I've got one more uh, slide here with uh, resources. There's WSJTX. There's a super good FT8 operating guide by G4 IFB. Uh, I learned a lot of a lot of good tricks from that. And then uh, Grid Tracker is GridTracker.org for the downloads and the documentation. So uh, let's dive right in. You guys see my whole screen pretty well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, looks good. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Bob. The what was the name? What was the call sign of the guy that does the YouTube's? I was. Uh, let me put that. Uh, let me get that back for you. I got a pencil, and then an ant ran across my page, and I was busy squashing it. G four. G four. Golf four. I F B. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can just Google the FT eight op guide to operating guide, and it'll pop up. It's an excellent resource. He's been putting it together for like five years. All right, so where are we? Okay, what I wanted to do is uh, just show the uh, configuration, the way I like to use this stuff. And then uh, most of this would be review. Uh, these are just some things that I uh, I like. I like to see a blank line between the decoding periods and the blank line also shows you which band you're on. So in case you're changing bands, that's real handy. And uh, distance in miles rather than kilometers for me. TX messages or RX show the DXCC grid and work before status. Now, um, WSJTX knows if you work somebody before, but it doesn't know if they've acknowledged or not. And so, uh, that's something that Grid Tracker can help with. Um, one thing that I learned in that document, uh, the, the G4 document, is this font selection. He said you, you could use the Consola <laughs> font or another font. And the reason that he uh, recommended it is that it has a strike through on the, on the, on the zero. And so when you're staring at a lot of uh, call signs, it's nice to know what's a zero and what's an O. I got you. I think there's another option. If you look at the document, uh, I've got that document open somewhere. Yeah, Consolas uh, or Monaco. I'm not, I don't know that I, I don't think I had Monaco, but uh, that was handy. 
Anyway, that's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, um, using the radio interface. One thing I learned uh, from watching a video is that if I set I set it to rig, I don't get any transmit output. And I was frustrated for <laughs> a long time until I found this video and a guy had a ch this tick box checked. He never said anything about it, but that's what he had checked and it works perfectly. Uh, bu 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 now, what you're showing us now is just the WSJTX yeah, I'm settings. Just yeah. Do a quick review of those settings. Uh, and uh, the audio TX reporting. Uh, okay. I turned on prompt me to log and enable PSK reporter spotting. So <clears throat> uh, Grid Tracker will pick up on the PSK report, reporter reports, and display them on the map for us. So we, we want to have that turned on. Um, and this UDP server and port number is where Grid Tracker is going to talk back to WSJTX. And you have to click on accept UDP request. That's not default. You have to click on that uh, in order to get the, get the stuff back. Uh, uh, let me see here. Frequencies is standard stuff. Colors. I've got basically everything turned on except for uh, logbook of the world user. I basically will work anyone. I prefer LOTW users because they actually confirm. But uh, anyway, oh. some the defaults, not all of these are, are turned on. And I like to see the difference between a CQ and a CQ from a new call. And I also uh, turned on the zones, ITU zones, because like, um, I worked Australia a couple of times, but Australia is like three different ITU, ITU zones. And so I like to know when, when I find something like that, that I haven't worked before. Uh, but, 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 oh, oh, that's all. Never mind. We're ignoring that page. There's one setting in here that I use too. Let me see. In decode, I have it set for deep and enable AP. Um, that gives you more decodes, but it also gives you uh, false decodes. So I uh, don't know if we'll see one tonight, but I saw a bunch of them earlier. Oh, look here on this, this guy from Greece, SV1 CQN. See the A3 at the end of his line here? You can see where I'm pointing? Yeah. A3 mm -hmm. is one of like six different mm -hmm. error codes that says, okay, I'm pretty, you know, uh, the program is telling me, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is right, and quite often it is, uh, but it's uh, it's been done by uh, using hints that accumulate over time with the program hearing what's on on the band. So it's uh, it's a trade off. If you do this, you get more, you get you see more stuff, but you also occasionally will get just out of the middle of nowhere, you'll get a call <clears throat> from Antarctica with a you know, fake call and, you know, it's just decoding stuff at random. So you got to be a little careful if you turn that on. And then that's about it. That's about all that's there. So uh, let's look at the, the configuration on the other side and I'll go through some of the features as well. The gear button is your uh, configuration. And uh, why is this? right on top of my oh i'll move that thing out somewhere <laughs> yeah i'm getting a i'm having trouble grabbing this little box i don't know if it will move all right, all right. i know i'm screen sharing all right it's getting in my way uh can i grab this toolbar and move it yes okay there we go. I can see it again. So the general setup here, um, if we go back to over here, we do settings and we do, I don't know why that's up there. Do not do that. Okay, whatever. What did I do? Radio, audio, well, reporting. Here it is. 
Uh, UDP port number 2237. UDP port number 2237. Okay. And, you know, it's talking to WSJTX. It's up. It's 127.001. That's because it's on the same computer. If you run them on two separate computers, you can forward to another host. There's a setting right here for, for that. And then you choose where you want miles or kilometers in English and all that good stuff. Uh, as far as lookups, I um, I use QRZ plus all the other ones down here that are checked, and it will it will look up look up all that information. It gets almost every call that you ever see. It'll pop up all, and I'll show you what it all looks like. But uh, look at the world. And sometimes you get stuff on WSJTX that uh, doesn't have a grid. And this will look it up and tell you what it is. So you don't have to go to uh, the QRZ page or somewhere else to figure that out. How did you get to the to the general page? I, I this one here is the gear, the gear button, Jim. Oh, where, where that, show me again. Where is this? Where is it? On happen? the far right side. Oh, the little green thing? Little green and orange gears. I oh, got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah, each little button does something, and we'll get into right. we'll get into uh, that. Okay, I see it now. I got it. All right. So uh, that's the lookups page. Um, there's a bunch of options. There's a bunch of documentation, but it's pretty darn straightforward once you get it going. Uh, it does text to speech, so it'll tell you like when there's a DXCC on on the band that you haven't worked before, or there's a state that you haven't worked before, or when somebody's calling you. I've got that turned off right now. Um, that's the the uh, speaker button. It it might start talking if I get a. Uh, I think I've got uh, almost all the states on twenty anyway. I got a state or a DXCC, and then the map controls the the map. Uh, what there's multiple maps you can use. You can animate the active paths. Well, you can see them the black animations right here. Those are other people on the band that it's picked up and it's, and it's displaying the, that that uh, QSO with the those bands. And the, there's a lot of a lot of things you can play with. Most mostly you don't have to play with that. In terms of grids, I think this is the default. I don't think I changed it. But down here at the bottom, there's a legend as well, and there's a button somewhere. But we'll go through all the buttons too. Oh, that's the key. Yeah, the key button turns that on and off. So that's uh... yeah. I think that's all default actually. <laughs> as far as logging, Grid Tracker itself maintains a log. And uh, you can tell it to go ahead and, and load that log on startup. You can also have local log files. For a while, I was downloading from EQSL, and then I had to load them in manually because the EQSL, uh, it, it will log it, but it won't bring it back. So right now, I'm doing it different. So, um, But it, you see it interfaces with just about everything. I've, and some of these I've never heard of, but you know, uh, if you're using anything that uh, is anywhere close to mainstream, they've got an interface for it. Does it tell you anything about other modes like CW or sideband? Uh, no, it does not do CW sideband. It will do it'll do other digital modes. Um, but uh, as far okay. as I know, it does not it's not useful for CW or sideband. It'd be okay. nice if it were. I mean, there's a lot of nice tools for that stuff, but nothing I've seen that's quite this automated. Yeah. Okay. And quite this informative, really. Um, so I'm using the N N3 FJP. Uh, this is the default IP address, which is the same computer, and it's port 1100, and that's lurking down here somewhere. There we go. Um, so I sent it from WSJTX. The information goes to uh, Grid Tracker, and when I first got Grid Tracker, I would let Grid Tracker talk to uh, Logbook of the World directly. Right now, I have the log button unchecked because I'm sending it instead to N3FJP first, and then letting it do uploads. Um, but um, it's quite flexible. 
uh, when I when I first got started with it, I wasn't using N3 FGP yet. That was just another complexity that I delayed learning about. And so uh, now I've got all that working and it works works quite nicely. Now, one of the great things about it is the alerts. This is what I typically use. <clears throat> and uh, we reference the current band in mode. Um, <coughs> choose new or new and unconfirmed. And I, I can ch I choose new and unconfirmed because if I work a country and they never confirm, I'll want to work that country again. Uh, so uh, CQO zones and ITU zones, I've got quite a few of those, so they don't pop up very, very often. But the last one I remember happening was Northern Australia for a new ITU zone. And then it'll, it'll alert you if there's states on that you want to want to work. And then the QRZ value down here says anytime my call is is uh, seen, it will uh, uh, give me an audible alert, tell me who's calling me. I hope to demonstrate some of that stuff. Uh, exceptions to alerts, uh, you can have alerts that, that are CQ only. You can require a grid. So if there are some calls, they apparently uh, with slash calls and some other strange calls, uh, they can't, the grid doesn't pop out uh, on uh, WSJTX. Uh, so if you click on require grid, it won't show up in the uh, grid tracker either. And the minimum dB, I said a minus 22, that anything that's even close to being uh, uh, workable. I want to see it. And there's a bunch of buttons here. And I quite frankly don't know what all of them do. <laughs> so I haven't played with it with all of them yet. But uh you can, you know, choose people that don't, only people that use logbook of the world or, or EQSL. Um and I'll show you a little bit. There's more subtlety to that than uh, just on or off. So I'll show you kind of how to dig into what the information that they're giving you. Uh but but uh, OMS. Oh, there's tech, there's messaging within this thing. I have never used it. It's down here. But you can actually send messages to people that are grid tracker users. And there's quite a few grid tracker users. I'll show you that in a minute as well. And then there's the logbook. Uh, where else was I? Oh. You don't know how long it's going to be coming out of that. Mm -hmm. the updates are built in. April twenty, April second is the most recent version, and that's about it. So, um, any questions on the kind of the gears here, all the settings? No, it looks pretty straight. No. Okay, cool. So, um, so I showed you this. That's the uh, the list of calls that are out there that are grid tracker users. Um, this here is button shows you a flag wherever there's a grid tracker user. There's a bunch of them. But it's not terribly useful other than that. Unless <laughs> you only want to work grid tracker users. How, how do you make the grids go on the map? Um, at that okay. point, I think. Okay. I got um, the map up, but there's nothing on it. Okay, that's uh, what 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 that is is you've got to have uh, the data from your WSJTX or else uh, downloaded from Logbook of the World. So I've got uh, Logbook of the World. I can go click a button and it downloads the most recent version of Logbook of the World. Okay. Well, and, in my in my logging thing, I've got logs. So I've got fifty one contacts on here. It says. Over on the side there where it says QSO, I've got 51 of them in there right now. Do you have the two programs talking to each other, Jim? Apparently not. Okay. Well, if if uh, if you get the grid tracker set up, it okay. knows where to find the WSJTX uh, data. And uh, yeah, it looks like it copied its log. I, I, if I go to logbook. Do you have any uh, uh, squares see. lit at all, yellow or red? No, I have none. Okay, that's a that's a logging issue. You're going to have to make make oh, sure. Wait a minute, got I got some yellow ones now. I okay. did something. <laughs> yellow ones are unconfirmed. Okay. So this guy, uh, 
and for VFR. I worked in back in January. See, these are all in the United States, it looks like. Whoops, I turned on the weather. It's got weather built in. <laughs> See where the storms are. Um, really? Yeah, this thing oh, is, you can click on one of those and it'll show you what the QSO, where it is. Okay. Yeah, so down uh, at the bottom here, I'll, I'll start at the bottom right. Oh, boy, this is going to all the logs. There's a photo. My log. How do I, how do I keep it out of all the log books? Uh, <laughs> Because I, I keep log books for W4RYZ also. It's on here with my log. Uh, They're all well, mixed together, it looks like. Don't don't save anything new till you know what, what you've got there, Jim. Yeah. Okay. But if you're looking for uh, POTA people, they, a little tree shows up on the screen. <laughs> okay. And in your and then I'll get into this uh, call roster. But... Uh, Poda, I downloaded this. Uh, the PSK, uh, my twenty-four report. I don't, I don't use that. This is spot reports, and I haven't been on. So let me see here. Let me, let me see here. I'm gonna move this crazy thing again. Yeah, I'm in a reasonably good spot. So let me, let me get a spot, and I'll call CQ here. Um, I'll turn off POTA for a minute. And um, well, we've got folks, folks that may be just getting started. Uh, it would be a, another talk, but this uh, WSJTX, it, these days it's the go to program for digital communications. And uh, so, uh, um, it's hugely popular, particularly with new hams. So, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Bob, your top uh, right corner is showing transmit sometimes and receive. Mine, just, right. says, mine just says waiting for a message. It hasn't ever changed yet. Yeah, well, you probably don't have it uh, talking to the uh, other program quite right. So I've got it running. The the WSJDA is running next to it, but I don't see it. I don't know what you've done to activate that to make it start seeing each other, I guess. Well, right uh, in the settings here, you've got to say accept UDP requests and, yep. and this port number. And then over here. Got to match uh, it up. Lookups, general, general, port 2237. I thought it was that way before. Let me go back to the other one. Let's see, under, uh, let's see, under the first setting. Uh, you were under, uh, let's see, that's way down there under reporting, I believe. Yep. Yep. Okay, uh, let's see. We want to do the first thing is that UDP server port number. Yeah, 2237. It's in there, and I've got accept UDP requests. Okay. Enable PSK reporting. Right. Uh, that's about all I see uh, down below is copying everything you showed on yours. Okay, and then uh, on the in the grid tracker, do you have it set like mine as well? Right. Let, me go to, let me go to grid tracker and see on the settings. That's under uh, uh, under just general, looks like. Yeah. Okay. Under general, I've got uh, port 2237. What else have we got? Uh, I got uh, call sign EM70. I could go ahead and put more, but that's fine. Uh, 12701. Everything else looks the same as yours, with the, okay. of the, the grid square. Uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and be a little more accurate on mine. EF. Okay. Uh, how about down at the bottom? Nothing changed. And that's all mine looks the same with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and after that, I have one yellow square right there over us, right here on this grid that we're in now, but that's all I saw on the map. Okay. That's probably you, right? Probably me. You, yeah. You hover over it. Uh, no, I just saw it on the map. Uh, do I have to save anything first before I close this other? Uh, anything you change on uh, 
uh, uh, this uh, settings is automatically saved every time you exit it. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Let me bring it back up. Okay. I'm trying to make that window go away so I can go back to my other window here. Um, let's see. What are we hitting to close that back where you don't lose the program? Where it closes, you don't hit the X at the top to so close. What are your What are you? A using? little uh, brown X with the yellow X inside the brown box. Victor Alpha Three Echo Charlie Oscar uh -oh. calling Alpha Bravo Four Oscar. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I ran a CQ there a minute ago. Oh, no, Chris that's, that's just that's me. <laughs> Sorry, I jumped the gun on that. I just wanted to <laughs> test it. That's Never mind. Right. It, you, you could hear it announcing it because somebody had used my call sign on the air. So <clears throat> thanks, Chris, for that. Nice demo. So, so one but, of the issues you'll have if it's not working is it could be a Windows firewall issue. You're using network connections, even though you're connected to your own computer. At least there's a potential that Windows could be stopping you. Yeah, that could be. That could be. So we've got some spots on the screen now. Uh, you can turn those off or you can make it a hot spot so you can see, wow, I'm really my signal is really getting in these places, right? I like the individual spots myself. I can see, wow, I got all the way over to Kuwait. Um, oh, that's one way out west in Western Australia. So these grits, uh, so I you guys have got uh, you start seeing these these uh, rectangles on the screen. You can hover over them, and it'll tell you uh, who who you worked and uh, when, and whether or not they confirmed it. That'll turn red if somebody in that grid square has uh, confirmed it. Can you uh, call up a grid right now? I'm wondering about who in EN twenty nine is not giving you a confirmation. Uh, well, <laughs> you haven't. Okay. <laughs> Oh, is that what the line, the line through me and ZIM, that's, uh, yeah, I know that's a uh, guy over at Falcon Lake. I know him too. So that when you look at this particular little screen, you can see Chris is a, a VA3 ECO. He's an, a, a logbook of the world user. Uh, the check mark means you actually have an account, uh, you know, there it doesn't mean you've actually used it recently. If you go into the, people picture, you'd see Chris Bigelow, <laughs> hamburgers on the Barbie, all right. Yeah, and and satellite at the same time. Wow, <laughs> that that's a real ham there. Doing it all. Doing <laughs> it all simultaneously. <laughs> but yeah, here you see, uh, these are, you enter these in uh, QRZ, you say, do, am I gonna acknowledge by LTW, EQSL, or mail direct? And Chris said, yes. And it also tells you the last time he actually logged into LOTW. So some of these guys, it'll show up yes here or yes on that little checkbox I showed you earlier, but they haven't checked in in five years. So you're not going to get you're not going to get a QSL from him. Bob, right. would you know the mail direct QSL? I, I am a little slow mailing back, but I've gone in and changed that to yes. Oh, okay. And it, and it goes back to no again. Is it does someone? doing that for me or how does that i assume it's coming from qrz uh so look at your qrz page and see I, i've seen some really screwy stuff yeah you know? well, I, i've been in there once or twice and said yes i do mail back and then it goes back to no again but i see some people there it says no 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 and then they've logged into lotw this week i go okay well i'll probably get a confirmation from that guy. yeah but okay. it's a little bit of a guessing game yeah. but okay. uh, this these little boxes tell you uh if there's a slash through, it means somebody's active right now. W4SO is talking to LAENA a minute ago. And uh, KC4WCY confirmed my QSO from 26 February. So um, that's what the slash means. Uh, so it, it's, it's really super helpful to visualize what's out there. Um, and, uh, sometimes, but well, one of the things I read in that little, uh, FT8 operating guide, 
um, I saw a guy down in Antarctica had heard had heard me on 17 meters. Uh, what is it? Uh, DP zero GVN. And uh, in that in that particular uh, PDF for uh, using uh, the uh, excuse me, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> Um, using FDA, it talks about, well, if, if somebody's heard you and you really need that country or this continent, that's the only <laughs> Antarctica I've ever gotten, uh, he said, just go ahead and call them if they, they heard you. And so the guy, I called the guy and after about five calls, he answered me back and he answered one other guy and then he disappeared again. So um, it tell you know, it, it visualizes, okay, where am I getting? There was a guy earlier today, I had a a uh, PSK report out of uh, Mayotte, which is over here by Madagascar somewhere. Mayotte Island, there's a, there it is. There's a, uh, a guy doing a de-expedition over there right now. I never, I couldn't hear him. He could hear me, but you know how that, that's how it goes. Um, anyway, so it, uh, one of the things I changed here was the map view filters that shows all the grids on all the bands and auto just sticks with the band you're currently on. So this is showing all the grids that have worked on uh, 20 meters right now. Um, so I, I like to take a, take a look at this. There's a guy down here, Guadalupe. I've worked him on another band, but I uh, I don't have that grid or that country on this band. So I'd love to, love to hear him. But uh, sometimes they're just monitoring and they never, they never show up uh, transmitting. So uh, I was going through the buttons here. Here's all the grids. You're gonna, you can bring up grids. Um, you zoom in, it'll give you the numbers as well as the, the letters. Ah. Um, this is the weather, the weather button, which is nice so to have. Does it tell you how you're doing with DXCC or? It or does. It, yeah. In fact, I just found some features today that, uh, were pretty interesting. So I'll see if I can find them again. That's the time zones. Uh, oh, this is how you pay the guy. Sorry. After I used this thing for like two weeks, I went and paid him 50 bucks. <laughs> I said, man, <laughs> I have never seen anything quite this handy for free before. There's your uh, solar data, band uh, conditions, all that good stuff that normally I have to have a page open for that, right? Search for it somewhere. What's the ADIF? Oh, load the ADIF. Oh, okay. It, that's if you are uh, got another ADIF file somewhere you want it to load. We did the gears. This is the, the uh, speaker, MH4. It'll, you can go MH6 if you want, but this shows the moon. Where is the moon right now? There it is. Huh. It's good for, uh, for Chris for your... Uh, yeah, me. <laughs> Moon bounce stuff. Yeah. This is a button that shows you the status of different uh, CQ zones, ITU zones, continents, states, DXCC, US counties, USC. US 48, and then uh, back to normal. Uh, so we went through this one. What's this? Uh, oh, that's the off offline mode. It'll work. It'll work when you're not online. Like, uh, but uh, it's best if you have a connection with the internet. It'd be handy though mountain. if you if you get into the groove of this thing and you want to use it for field day or something like that. It's nice to know you can do it offline as well. Yeah, absolutely. And then this is a gray line toggle. Um, I like seeing it. This what's this guy? Oh, that's the key down here at the bottom. Tells you what the what the legend for the uh, the grid squares are. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know. Okay. I'm sharing my uh, my grid tracker status. So 
question. Hot key list. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't done anything with hot keys, but there's a lot you can do. Okay, what else is here? Uh, oh, yeah, this is the one I just found. <laughs> okay, I never clicked this button before. Uh, my DXCCs. They'll show you what I have and what I need. What button was that? That one is the uh, upper right button oh, here. Oh, little thing there. Okay. Show stats. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where my fifty-one QSOs are. Okay. There they are. But so. That's, um, but that's yeah, all there's all kinds of stuff in here, and like I said, I just found this earlier today, and uh, it'll tell you your totals worked and uh, confirmed and all that good stuff. I've worked 75 and confirmed 66 on, uh, on 120 meters so far. This is a tremendous amount of information. <laughs> it is an incredible amount of information for, especially for free. That's why I went and cut the guy 50 bucks because I'm saying, I want to encourage him to do more, you know, keep it going. Yeah. Uh, he, until recently he had, uh, a lightning indicator so not only could you get the weather but it would alert it would give you an alert uh if lightning struck within 10 miles of your home and the first time it happened it scared the crap out of me because it sounds like a lightning strike the default <laughs> sound sounds like a lightning strike <laughs> And I'm looking at my rig like, where's the smoke? Something just blew up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, apparently the, the vendor that had the information, uh, it used to be open source and now they closed it. So he can't get it anymore. Uh, but that's unfortunate. But um, so we, we played with the cool. stats. Uh, this is the people screen. You can type in anyone's call. So yeah. Yeah, I wonder what he was using as a source because that lightning.org I think is all open. Hmm. Oh, I did it wrong. <laughs> Can't even put my own call in. <laughs> I don't know. I know he's working on getting it back, but it was a nice, it was a handy feature. Yeah. So that's that. Um, the yes, no, no. I actually do upload EQSL on occasion, but you can see here I'm a, I'm still a member, but I've checked LOTW. On the 11th 11th that's not right i i uploaded today so anyway um uh, what's this one oh push pins you could change from the squares to push pins i don't find that useful myself uh and this one this one is great and i it took me a long time to start using this but it is spectacular once you get the hang of it one of the problems with uh, WSJTX, especially if you turn on the, the deep decodes, is that you'll get some decodes and then a, later in the cycle, a couple seconds later, it'll pop up a couple more decodes. And so you try, you're aiming over here and trying to hit this VE2, and it slides up another and you end up sending to the wrong guy. But over here, you can just click on this. And it talks back to WSJTX. That's the thing. In order for it to talk back, that's where you have to have it to uh, uh, WSJTX set to accept UDP requests, um, so that the it's transferring information in both and in, in accepting information back. There's Guy Garon. But uh, it pops it up and say, yeah, he's LOTW and he logged in a couple just yesterday. So I'm pretty sure he'll confirm. And you, it also brings up other activity for with him. And if you've worked in before, it shows you all the bands you've worked Canada on. I've worked Canada on 160, but I've not got a confirmation. Victor Echo 2 Whiskey X-Ray calling there he is. Alpha Bravo for Oscar Bravo. Live demo. I've worked him, but I've never worked him on 20 meters. So he saw you hearing you, so he called you blind, eh? No, I double I, I clicked on oh, here. okay. I clicked on his call. It was a CQ next to it. And uh he's up here. You can see the grid he's in. 
the E2WX whiskey extra. I don't have that one on 20 meters. So clicking on that roster will, it will go back. It's yeah. as if you did it on WS. That's correct. And you even have a halt TX button if you want to kill the yeah. transmit. Um, but um, so they're, they're like integrated together. And it took me a while to figure that one out too, that I had to have in order to click here. I was still going back for a long time. I was using this, but still going back to uh, WSJTX to click on things. All right, his signal's kind of weak, but we'll see if we get him anyway. We can we can talk around it. Um, my, uh, let me see if we can see all traffic on the band. Uh, it's a pretty big list right now. Oh, well, you can give and, me a shot if you want. Yeah, let me see here. Well, why don't I call you and you answer? Okay, let's do that. I'm on second. Okay, got one more call. So you can see uh, some of these guys uh, I've worked before. So there's there's a slash through them if I put on everything. <clears throat> and then, uh, so I usually do all traffic only wanted. And then you can go in here and it's live banded mode. That's what you want. Uh, what do I want? Well, I want new grids, new DXCCs. Victor Alpha 3 Echo Charlie Oscar calling Alpha Bravo for Oscar Bravo. Christopher Bigelow. Now that should be new grid. It is right here. EN 29. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's faded because I worked a guy in that grid, but he never confirmed. So yeah, that's Kevin. He doesn't do LOTW. I don't think if it's solid, it uh, means I haven't worked that grid on this band. Victor and, Alpha three echo Charlie Oscar calling Alpha Bravo for Oscar there we go. Bravo. Yeah, you came in at minus five. That's pretty healthy. Yeah, and you, you were at minus two, so uh, no problem at all. And, and I didn't have a PSK spot from up that way, but there's a lot of my, uh, I have a long wire in a tree, so uh, I have <laughs> random directions. I get really good gain in random directions. Um, so you can say, well, what am I looking for? Uh, Alpha 3 Echo Charlie Oscar oh, thank calling. You. Alpha Bravo for Oscar Bravo. No, I should be clear now. Yes, sir. Should be good. Yeah. And then yeah. you can click on WPX and it'll tell you what prefixes. And there's a prefix column here. I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, you can put POTAs in here. Now there's that's an that's an American grid too. You know, if you're doing your 488 EN29. <laughs> oh, is it partially it in? The United there's States. There's a tiny, right? tiny bit in the I States. Of Minnesota. Oh, yeah, that little piece of Minnesota. And there's no hams there. So other than me, that's it. Well, you better confirm then. <laughs> <laughs> I just did one a minute ago. I'll do another one now. I'll get you next time you come to town otherwise. <laughs> All right. So, the yeah, you can turn on POTA. You turn on um, OEMS. What's OEMS? Oh, that's that's the, the chat feature. And uh, somebody I talked to said, uh, uh, said that somebody started chatting with them that he didn't even realize the feature was there. And I've never had anybody try to chat with me, so it doesn't happen very often. And then I'm looking for CQ zones and ITU zones. I don't know what marathon is, but that's probably some kind of contest thing. State, you can look. You can look. If you counties. change, if you change all these settings, uh, does it save them when you go back? Say I just erased everything and put POTA for a while, and uh -huh. then go back and check them back out. Does it save that information and bring it back up? Yeah, the, the controls, like we turn off all this and just go POTA. Right. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, okay. That's what I want. You can see it, it's, it shows up right away. I'm, I'm just learning. I'm kind of trying to stay with POTA for a while to get my feet wet. Well, that's a good, good thing to work with. POTA guys always want to be heard, so. Are, uh, have you been brave enough to call CQ POTA yet? No, I have not activated. That, I, I just, I've just been hunting. That's scary as hell. Is it? Well, <laughs> I, I've seen the videos of people getting the pile ups. Yeah. Oh yeah, you will get your pencil sharpened. <laughs> and so you can even do regular expressions. Um, see how I've got nine A in there. Yeah. Um, one of the guys in the club goes to what? The Croatia? 
Yeah, Charlie. Charlie, and that's a 9A. Uh, and so I was looking for anybody from Croatia at the time. And they would automatically show up in my list. Uh, there's a lot of exceptions. I used to start off with, I only want to see people that are doing CQs. Well, and that's great to start with. In fact, there's a button over here on uh, WSJTX that shows you only CQ. So if you're just getting started with w, WSJTX, it's really kind of crazy when you see everything on the band. And so you can limit it to just CQs. Yeah, I haven't I haven't loaded anything up yet. I'm just... And then I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to get with a gentleman this week, and he's going to show me a lot of stuff. There you go. On, on data. Well, it helps to have a, a, a an Elmer to uh, you know show you around. I I, uh, I learned all this the hard way, which is great. Uh, but uh, there's just a whole lot here, and I I don't know how to use all this, quite frankly. Oh, here this is a default, I think. You can click on no CQ Russia. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, is that new? Uh, that's been around <laughs> for a while, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure like, that's the default. And then this like, is just only CQ field day. So you can click on only CQ field day. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of ways you can change this display to make it useful for you. Um, I think I changed something. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, prefixes, uh, grids. Yeah, I usually have grids on. I'm not worried about prefixes at this point, but. So I've uploaded you to LOTW. I guess you'd have to close the program and start it again, or can you do a. I can do it from here. Can you do a check? Mm -hmm. LOTW check. <laughs> Now, this is going to take it to your logger. Yeah, this is N3FGP. It's everything in green has been uploaded uh, and confirmed to be uploaded. And everything in blue has been confirmed. And black is? Black is stuff that I just uploaded and I haven't downloaded again yet. OK. Oh, this is a little bit manual, but it, it works well otherwise. So, all right. So this- I do mine call, manually too. The call roster is uh, very, very helpful. At first, you know, you, know, you probably don't care about grids. You're just looking for DXCCs and states and IT zones and continents and stuff. And, uh, you know, I just- if, if I'm serious, like I, I went from 90 to 101 countries on 15 meters in about eight or 10 days. And all I, I turned on, all I, all I turned on was states and DXCCs and I got my 50 states and I got my 101 countries. So I, uh, I would just sit in, I would sit in the lab and work on something and have this tell me when somebody was on the air that I needed. Hey, you didn't have to watch it, it would yell at you, right? Exactly. It well, yells at you. Now, cool. I'm used to uh, FT8 popping up that log thing. Uh -huh. You know. Uh, the log uh, Q-cell window like this? Yeah. Yeah. Now, does that still happen or is that optional or what? It does. There's a setting for it um, uh, da, 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 somewhere. Reporting. Prompt me to log, first checkbox. Yeah. Now, what would happen if you didn't do that? It just wouldn't log it? <laughs> well, it, depending on how you have it how you have it set up. Earlier, I had it set up so it would send the information to Grid Tracker, and Grid Tracker would upload it to uh, EQSL and to LO2W. So then it was automatically logged, even though it, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I think if you don't have the pop up, you have to you have to hit the log QSO button. Okay. I prefer well, they, so I don't forget. They just leave that one little thing in there that require requires you. <laughs> Otherwise, <Yeah>. it's <laughs> it's pretty much automatic. <laughs> There's um, yeah. 
Well, I mean, there's there's plenty of uh, strategy to find a frequency yeah. and find somebody to talk to and all right. of that. Um, I mean, it's like, I mean, do you ever use spotting networks on CW, you know, or uh, SSB? Sure, people use those all the time, but does that yeah. make it too easy? Uh, no. It makes it easier than it used to be. <laughs> that's too easy that's your opinion right well I uh i don't judge yeah actually that uh i'm not so skilled at that but that has changed the contesting world that there's so many aids assistants they call it yeah right absolutely there are uh derivations of wsjt i think wsjt dash z or something like that or z as you say in florida that there will, there uh, is uh and, then log JT and and go transmit again automatically yeah and i think mshv will do that yeah in other words you can leave the house and make use of so well yeah that's what i was worried about <laughs> and I, i'm pretty they sure are. i've worked a couple guys that i mean they're just sending they're sending uh CQs on 20, 30, 40 times, or, yeah. or you know, they're they're chasing after one call dozens of times when they're not being answered. So I I I don't want I don't want that. There's I like the automatic uh auto sequencing here. Otherwise it it ha everything happens so quickly that you're gonna be checking the next message and you're gonna screw something up. And you you'll notice <coughs> other operators that are doing doing it manually and they're going to get them in a different order. Um, so sometimes we'll screw things up. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is check this whole TX frequency. This is super handy. Um, if you don't do that, when you answer somebody, it changes to their frequency. And uh, then the next time you transmit, you're right on top of them. And uh, especially bad if they're DX uh, and dozen people are trying to call them, but uh, you got to watch watch that. Yeah, I, I go, I jump to their frequency if we're really having troubles completing the QSO and I'm suspecting right. he's in a busy area. So I'll jump to his frequency, but you got to remember to leave there as soon as you're done. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, that's, you know, another one of the operating tips that you can get out of that uh, PDF file for FT8. Um, the other thing they just recently changed is when you do a CQ, instead of uh, replying to the first one, you can reply to the one at the maximum distance. That just came in in the last update uh, of WSJTX, which kind of kind of nice. All right, where are we? I guess wanted DXCC. Okay, I got a wanted DXCC wanted CQ zone. <laughs> wanted ITU zone. Go for it. See this line item right here? <clears throat> uh, where is it? This one. B, J, H, Z, S, B, W, Q, 0, W, 9 with dot, dot, dot. That looks like That's a garbage a false one. That's decode. Yeah. It's really weak. And, you know, all, all uh, Grid Tracker knows is that it's, uh, it's, it's not a country I've worked before. So it says, oh, <laughs> it's DXCC. But it doesn't show up in the list because there's no information that fits the right pattern. So anyway, you'll get weird stuff like that occasionally. But uh, anyway, we're, um, I've covered most of the uh, stuff I wanted to show, Greg. Okay. And uh, I don't know if we've got questions. We can take questions. Uh, well, it seems like it's only as automatic as you want it to be. Right. You can always, automate you it. You got a ton of settings there, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can click through each one of these separately if you want to. Yeah. But it happens, you know, every 15 seconds, you got to be on there. You got to click the right button. Um, so, as, as, as far as grid tracker, you could have it set up so that it just shows you a map of mm -hmm. who, what states you worked and just leave it at that. If that's all you're interested in, right, you can, right, right. You can right. configure it to do that only. Here's my states. List on. I, I need Louisiana, which, which is where I figure I'm going to start at. So, oh, I need Alaska as well on 20 meters. Isn't that weird? Where's well, Hawaii? 20. You got Hawaii already? Yeah, I got Hawaii, but I don't yeah. have Alaska. Alaska will be easy. Louisiana on 20 could be tough. <laughs> I know you're too close. <laughs> Absolutely. 
So that's, it is super convenient for that kind of stuff. So there's my DXCCs, just about anywhere in Africa, got one confirmation. I think this one might count for Africa. No, Canary doesn't. Oh, anyway, um, yeah, it, it's, there's so much uh, here. You yeah. Just kind of live with it for a while, play with it. I'm still learning. I, I just found this particular stat sheet uh, that I showed earlier. I just found that just today when I was playing around trying to get uh, get ready for this uh, discussion here today. But um, so you have WSJTX downloaded first and then download this? Yes, sir. You want to start with WSJTX? Okay. Um, just Google WSJTX download and right. you get there. Or just WSJTX. I've been there. I just hadn't pulled the trigger. There you go. It's uh it's a heck of a lot of fun. I mean, sometimes I like to sit here and listen to music while I'm working people. You know, it's like it you can do you can do two things at once like that. Yeah, I've even put a remote uh remote in software so that I can be in the other room watching TV with my wife and keep an eye on it at the same time. Uh, this is not your father's ham radio. No. <laughs> no. No. This is no. lazy radio. It's not to annoy your wife necessarily. It's just, I figure it's just one more form of communication. It yeah. is. Well, it is all it's, about it. Yeah. You know, it's well, got its I'm, own skill set. I mean, yeah, it's certain yeah. aspects is easier, but it's still got other aspects that are that take a lifetime to learn. You know, well, Bob is very informative. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you appreciated it. And I'm going to stop sharing here. There we go. Oh, Gentlemen. <laughs> now we're all back. <laughs> well, uh, any uh, additional questions for Bob? Well, that hey, Bob, this is uh, uh, I use uh, do you know anybody that uh, I've, I've got a problem with installing. Uh, do you know anybody that uses Linux that I can talk to? There's not much direct support uh, from uh, uh, Grid Tracker. Uh, even their forum on groups.io is not much good. Okay. Well, I am. Um, I haven't had much trouble with it. I've, I've read yeah. uh, documentation and. Uh, Watched uh, well, YouTube videos of people doing the configurations and stuff. Ken, like are that. you talking about using it on Linux? Absolutely. What I want to know is who out there in the Linux world could I talk to? Uh, because the the directions that are provided by Good Tracker uh, do not work. Uh, Well, so, they might have. Know, a, I can't even get it in, installed. Yeah. And I, I am a multi multi year Linux user. <laughs> so it's not like I'm yeah. hiding behind a bush somewhere. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know who's uh, using Linux. That's just another. So y'all don't know any Linux. So, that's so. An, another degree of difficulty that I don't deal with. <laughs> I got a lot of ham radio software. Well, normally, Linux high. is. I was saying, but I I played around quite a bit with Raspberry Pis and getting software to run on there for ham radio. Um, but grid track was not one of the things that was that I looked at. You know, Ken, have you done any groups.io stuff? It's kind yep. of the uh, fact I is I got grid trackers groups and it was like pretty much useless. Okay, so you posted as there, and there's no one there because I, I just I'm not a, a direct line. Yeah, I don't know what to suggest then. I'm just looking at. I'm not a member of it, but I see there monthly they've got between 100 and 200 posts on that groups.io group. Surely someone in there must be a, a Linux guy. Yeah, you, think? <laughs> you would think. Well, sure, there's ton, tons of them, but uh, uh, as far as searching the uh, files and, and finding something it's uh you know that looks like a lot of problems yeah well you're breaking up a little uh 
Kim, maybe somebody will uh, comment on the YouTube. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to go ahead and thank Bob for stepping up and uh, informing us all about Grid Tracker. It's a program I have not tried, so this gives me a big head start. So I uh, really appreciate it. So certainly welcome. And I can tell you're having lots of fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoy it. All right. Okay, well, these presentations uh, go on YouTube, so uh, you can watch it again and share it with uh, other folks. So uh, let's see.